dedicated license plate um, modules that are optimized for different uh, country um, number plate styles. Um, <coughs> the application is an add-on product that is compatible with uh, most of our XProtect VMS products and uh, the Myson Husky NVR series. So you basically can can work with the license plate recognition software um, in various kind of installations ranging from small installations into mid-market uh, type of solutions all the way up to the high-end um, sort of more advanced type of uh, installations using X Xprotect Expert and Xprotect Corporate. In terms of um, functionality and um, sort of um, applications that we can build using uh, the license plate uh, recognition uh, software it ranges uh, quite um, broadly uh, from what we normally would know as protect and prevent type of installations where you have gating type of um, applications we we grant people in grant people access into parking spaces uh, we grant people access to premises, businesses, uh, hospitals and so forth and we can also track the uh, access into those premises by using uh, the application. And typical type of customers in this would be um, Porsche airport, could be defense facilities, schools, parking facilities, shopping malls and even gated uh, communities or gating residentials. So this is um, very much about having proactive um, pr pr protection of uh, a certain uh, parameter protection basically. You have a premise that you want to uh, gate access to. Um, but license plate recognition can also be uh, used in a totally different context where we use the knowledge about the vehicles for building business intelligence. Uh, it could be customer service, it could be um, tracking um, uh, tracking the effect of a marketing campaign, uh, you could see whether you would have a people uh, or vehicle coming in from uh, certain uh, re regions or uh, if you just increase the volume of uh, vehicles by, uh, by uh, marketing campaigns. But you could also uh, use it for loyalty programs, so you have your best customers, you can recognize those and you can, uh, uh, based on their number of visits, you can actually give them uh, bonuses and so forth and honor, honor them in other ways. And um, this can be applied in uh, more consumer type of uh, environments, in consumer type of, um, of industries, uh, uh, hotels, resorts, uh, it could be shopping malls, it could be restaurants and so forth. Uh, so it's basically just the imagination that puts the limits to this. Another type of uh, application area would be loss prevention and here you, you probably would be looking at uh, high value goods that are easily accessible uh, by vehicles. The obvious uh, case would be fuel stations but you could also have drive-in shopping places, uh, shopping malls, etc. And here you, you basically by recognizing the identity of the vehicle, you can prevent misuse of maybe business cards or company fuel cards um, more, more specifically. Uh, you could have um, um, prevention of drive-offs, people that fill uh, petrol and don't pay the bill and just drive away. Uh, so you could, if they are um, a part of a blacklist, you can actually prevent them and block uh, the pump uh, up front instead of allowing them to fill the petrol. And you can also uh, use the license plate uh, recognition with integration with point of sale systems. You can automate some of the processes in, in, the, in the fuel um, filling process. So this is a, another type of um, application for the license plate recognition. A fourth um, case uh, would be to improve efficiency where you can automate um, otherwise manual processes. Uh, typically you could have a, a toll a toll or toll pay station uh, where you could um, minimize the need for manual labor and actually automate the pay process altogether. You could have a traffic analytical uh, applications where you uh, monitor traffic patterns by actually identifying individual vehicles and identifying the travel patterns and so forth. But you could also uh, apply to fast lane subscription, the diamond lane type of uh, applications, but also more sort of um, 
governmental type of uh, installations, border control, city surveillance, etc. And uh, normally those type of installations would be uh, relatively large installations. Uh, they could be law enforcement type of uh, customers. It could be city, city um, surveillance customers, law enforcement altogether, um, toll stations and parking facilities. So. Basically, what you've seen on those four slides that I showed you is that there is a broad spectra of applications areas for license plate recognition. And basically, you can use it in um, security aspects, you can have it in, in uh, efficiency aspects, but you also could have it more in business intelligence and secondary uh, aspects. It could be a question, how does all this actually work when it comes to uh, processes and sort of uh, steps that we take in the process? And I have a set of slides uh, taking you through that sort of logical build-up of uh, a system, because there is a capture piece um, where everything originates. We have cameras that detect vehicles in the field and feed that image, those images into an analytical application. We use country modules to optimize the recognition rate to actually uh, specialize on different layouts of the license plates. And then we can pair and match uh, identified uh, license plates with a predefined pool of uh, um, license plates. And we do that through match lists and we can have uh, uh, any type or any number of match lists that we uh, pair the recognized uh, license plates uh, against. And then we can use that knowledge in various um, consumption levels. It could be a matter of just showing the information to operators, security officers, officers, etc. Or it could be to draw uh, automatic actions to open gates, etc. Or it could just be used uh, for investigation and reporting. So there are a number of use cases also on, on the consumption side of, of this application. Let's, uh, just for clarity, dive into some of those areas and talk a bit more in detail on, on the different aspects. And if you look at the capture piece, um, the Xprotect LPR application works with all cameras that the Milestone VMS or the Husky uh, NVR unit support. So you basically can mix and match and select the camera that best fits the purpose of your installation, but also the customer budget. Um, we normally would recommend um, high-spec cameras uh, or even infrared cameras to eliminate some of the envir environmental conditions, uh, light conditions and so forth. But otherwise, dependent on uh, the use case, you could actually use also more ordinary cameras, especially if you are applying uh, license plate recognition indoor in parking houses, etc., where <coughs> cars are standing still or moving slowly and you have uh, relatively controlled uh, light conditions. But you also can use um, LPR, X-Protect LPR for multi-lane detection. Uh, you have a screenshot here to the right showing a highway with two lanes. Uh, it could be three, four, five lanes as well using just one uh, single camera. Um, so it actually is very flexible also when it comes to the detection piece. On the analytical um, side, uh, we work with uh, something that we call the country modules, and we have dedicated country modules for more than 100 countries around uh, the globe, which means that uh, the application is broadly applicable uh, regardless of geographics of where you are operating and um, working. Um, and should you uh, be based in a country where you actually are lacking support for, um, for a specific country module, uh, you can place a request with Milestone and if we deem the business case to be uh, relevant and good enough, we can actually create or expand uh, the support with additional country modules. But just contact uh, the Milestone pre-sales um, team and uh, we can have a discussion around that. Um, the country-specific models um, or modules, they are optimized for the license plate styles that are used in a specific country. So you would have a, a syntax for, for the license plate, you would recognize, or you would have a, a syntax for the build-up of characters and numbers and combination of those to actually increase the accuracy rate of the recognition. But if you are 
looking for more broader coverage, uh, but maybe not that exact or precise uh, detection. We also offer um, a set of generic modules. Um, today we have a, a serious or one module for uh, Australia, the states in Australia. We have. Um, another module for the countries in the EU zone and a third for the states of America and then we also have a global very generic module that basically covers any license plates and as I said um, the drawback of those more generic modules is that you have a slightly uh, less accurate recognition in, in, the, in the sort of recognition stage. And when you apply this with a customer, you can use any combination of uh, country modules. So uh, if you're working in a, um, in a particular state and you have surrounding states, you can actually activate uh, the surrounding states as well and actually have um, sort of a mix and match according to the customer's needs. And um, if you are interested to see what countries and what states we are specifically supporting, you just web into the Milestone webpage or website, uh, you look up the XProtect LPR product page and there there is a reference to um, all the license plates that we support. Um, on the match list side, um, as I said, uh, match lists are used to um, spawn actions based on a predefined set of license plates. So that could be, for example, a black list of uh, cars, it could be a list of stolen cars, it could be a list of my best customers. And based on that matching, I can do actions, I can present the information to um, the operators working with the system to actually enrich um, and empower the operators to take the right actions. And I'll show you some examples of how this works uh, later on in the presentation. Um, the good thing is that uh, you can import uh, match lists from external sources um, very easily, but you can also um, define those through the management client or even the smart client. So it's very dynamic and you can work with those um, very sort of um, uh, agile if in, in the work process. Um, on, the, on, on the usage side, uh, we have uh, different aspects of consumption of um, and work cases for operators using um, the XProtect LPR uh, application. And one thing is to just track uh, passages and detection of vehicles in real time. And uh, here you will see a, um, to the right here, and I actually use the highlighter here. So here you have the camera view and to the right here you present uh, information for the detected vehicles. So all the details that uh, we have for the vehicles is presented here um, to the right. So it's very intuitive and very sort of um, complementary information to the video itself. Um, and of course, um, the operator can the, the the smart client operator can select any any event in this uh, monitoring list and actually replay um, the specific um, video footage for that uh, detection. So it's very easy to navigate in in uh, also recorded material. Um, I got got a. Um, video coming up here on how it actually looks in more in real life. So here we have the smart client and we have a, a camera mounted on the highway. We have two lanes in, in either direction. And um, here you can see, we take a closer look at um, this event log uh, for the license plates. So here we can see the different detections that we uh, make with the camera. Uh, it's presented to the operator. We have a um, the actual uh, license plate, we have the time of recognition and we have the country of that particular vehicle. And here we also have an information unlisted uh, and that indicates that we have no match list defined for this particular license plate. But if we had had a, um, a, li a match list defined, it would also be presented here. So this is how we empower the operator and actually complement the information seen in the video with the license plate information. Um, we all, I also talked about actions that we could uh, spawn actions based on um, uh, the recognition of license plates and that can be based on both the sheer recognition but it can also be based on matches uh, against one or several match lists um, and that could be used to control parking barriers and 
gates into a premise. It could be used to uh, generate an alarm. For example, if we detect uh, a stolen car, we could generate an alarm and we could take appropriate action on that. Uh, but we can also use the events to do external lookups in external databases or interwork with, with uh, applications, third-party applications that we integrate through uh, the MIP SDK. So you have basically all the flexibility that you need to actually build very sort of customer-oriented applications around the license plate recognition. Um, another very important piece is uh, how we can do investigations and conduct investigations. Um, <clears throat> what you see here to the right in the screenshot is the list of events, the list of detected um, license plates that we have in the system and it's presented with the recognized license plate, uh, time of recognition, uh, country, uh, country module uh, and so forth so you have all the information and it's very very powerful uh, filtering tools that you actually can drill and search in, in, in uh, the sort of a vast number of data that you have in the system and you can narrow it down to time and so forth so you can do very accurate uh, search and you can also search for parts of the license plate um, number so if you have had an incident a witness uh, remember only parts of uh, the vehicle uh, identity uh, we can search for parts of the, the licensing uh, license um, uh, number so it's it's very powerful And also, uh, based on the selection that you do in uh, that event list, you can also spawn and draw a report, a PDF report, uh, a universal, universal format that can be used by anyone. And um, here we present um, all this, um, the selected um, um, license plate detections with details, a video thumbnail, and the um, license plate uh, close up on the actual number plate and I have a video showing this how they, this actually works and it comes up here. So this is how it looks like in the, in the smart client and uh, as you see up here we have a dedicated tab for license plate um, recognition and this is um, the event list that I talked about and uh, what we do here in this particular screenshot is that we filter uh, the list so we now we make a search on all cars and all detected vehicles from Poland. So we selected the Polish um, um, country module and we do the search for that. I can of course also do searches in time or as I said parts of the registration numbers and actually narrow down the search even further. But based on the selection I can then uh, have a very quick preview of each of the each of the detected vehicles and I have an immediate um, part of the video coming up and I can do an, a playback of that video and I have all the information presented together with that vehicle. So it's, it's very easy to find um, and actually do an in investigation based on this. When I found my uh, wanted uh, set of um, vehicles I can also generate a report, a documentation of um, the search um, the report that I showed you earlier and um, it's very easy done by us uh, generating the uh, report and this is how it looks like as it comes up the PDF report and here you can see the information that we present and um, apart from uh, the details that we present for each uh, listing, um, the video thumbnail and uh, the close-up of um, the actual license plate. Um, I also want you to pay attention to the fact that we have very good images um, despite the heavy backlight, the heavy sunlight, uh, you, rec you can see the shadow coming from the lorry here. Um, so we, we, despite that, have very good sort of close-up on, on the actual license plate and there, there is no difficulty in actually reading um, the, the license numbers. So this is just to prove how, how powerful uh, the application is and I should also say that we have not been using any special camera or any sort of a special, specifically advanced uh, setup you doing this. And those vehicles, they are also moving in high uh, speed. Um, although they are lorries, uh, they are probably moving in um, something like 90 kilometers an hour on the highway here. 
So that is basically what what um, what you can find as a baseline in the Exprotect LPR uh, application and the different steps in the usage um, process. If we then take a look at what we introduce as new capabilities in the Exprotect LPR 2015 release, we are having four focus areas and starting from the bottom and maybe the most important is ease of configuration and this is how we make it easier for you as integrators and resellers to actually deploy the solution with end customers. This is complemented then with the new reporting function that I just showed you, uh, the PDF report, and we also done extensions to the match list and uh, where we can complement uh, the match list with the custom data so we can actually enrich uh, the use of the match list. And then finally, we, we made adjustments to the pricing. Uh, we re made some um, optimization in how we package the product, which I hope you can um, benefit from doing business with the Exprotect LPR application. But anyway, let's take a closer look at each of those um, um, enhancements and uh, let's start with the ease of configuration. And one very important piece here is that <clears throat> we introduce a snapshot driven configuration wizard, which means that the entire setup process of the LPR and uh, the recognition engine is automated based on a set of snapshots that you do or, and, and that you take as a part of the installation process. Um, and I actually got a couple of videos to just demonstrate how easy this is. So now you should picture that you are having a predefined uh, VMS system and you want to enable one of the cameras as an LPR camera. So what we do is that we uh, select what camera that we want to add to the LPR application. So we, we search, um, this is the VMS system, and here we have a, a Highway M34 camera that we have defined for this particular demonstration. So we import it. And now we can select what country modules we want to apply for this camera. Um, and uh, since we are um, running this demonstration in Europe, in Denmark, we select some uh, European uh, license plates uh, or country modules. And um, you can select as many modules as you have purchased or the end customer has purchased um, uh, licenses for. And you can have any combination. And now we enter into the snapshot process. So here what we do is that we have a live image of the camera that we are enabling the license plate recognition process on. Uh, and we take a series of snapshots that are representative for um, uh, the, this, um, this particular camera. And what you should consider taking those snapshots is that they should be as representative as possible, they should cover different light conditions, they should cover different um, time of the year maybe even, uh, different weather conditions if you're operating outdoor and so forth in order to optimize and feed that into um, uh, the recognition engine. Uh, and also what I should say is that if you have images taken previously on recorded material, you can import those uh, as a batch import and um, work with those uh, snapshots instead. And once you're uh, happy with the set of um, snapshots, you feed those into the engine and now the engine optimizes the different uh, settings. And here um, you, we start uh, a feedback process uh, where we actually ask um, the integrator whether the specific snapshots have been recognized correctly. And what you can see here is that for each snapshot we present uh, which country module that we used uh, for detecting the vehicle, we present the registration number, and we also present the confidence level. Uh, in this case, 91%. And again, despite the heavy backlight and the sort of very sort of uh, difficult uh, conditions, also with the high speeding, uh, high high speed moving uh, vehicle, and this is a private car, so it's probably moving uh, something like 120, 130 kilometers an hour. But anyway, for each of the snapshots, uh, we feed back into the system 
uh, whether the snapshot is correctly interpreted or incorrectly recognized and uh, this is then done in for each of the snapshots be fed into the system. And maybe we could jump because it just repeats itself here. Like that. And then we can also decide to um, add um, the snapshots to a match list as a part of this process. But now we are applying this configuration into the system and when we close this dialog the system is ready for use. So this is how simple it is to set up a license plate recognition uh, application. Um, it doesn't take more than a couple of minutes. Uh, what you saw here is in principle a real case uh, where we have some snapshots being taken and you feed that in and the application is auto configured based on those snapshots. So those of you who have been working with previous versions of our XProtect LPR application hopefully appreciate the easiness of the setup because there is hardly no way to actually uh, fail in this, uh, this setup phase. Um, um, one of the critical components in setting a system up is of course uh, the camera placement and all the environmental uh, conditions and um, those we cannot automate uh, as such but uh, hopefully the configuration of the recognition engine is vastly improved by, by this release. And uh, now you can be thinking is those uh, default settings and sort of auto configurations really good enough and in some cases it might not be and in some cases you might actually need to manually tweak the settings and there is also a very easy way of doing that and this is uh, what I'm demonstrating in this uh, uh, video. So now we are revisiting the camera that we just configured and what you see here is that um, based on the snapshots we actually have auto configured a detection field so um, the camera will be looking for vehicles uh, and license plates in a sub part of the camera view and that is the sort of uh, not non-red or the sort of highlighted uh, piece here and the camera basically disregard um, any license plate or any moving object in the other part of uh, the, the camera view. Um, some, in some cases um, it's a good thing to have a narrow uh, search uh, detection field because it actually optimizes the hardware use but in some cases you can actually achieve a higher recognition rate by enlarging um, the recognition area and it's very easily done, it's shown here in the video, uh, we basically do a marking and we apply a wider uh, recognition area immediately into uh, the camera and we can also um, adjust uh, the size of um, the, the characters uh, that we have in, in the license plates and by that also optimize the recognition uh, rate and the confidence level and as you can see here we have a um, sort of a reference uh, size placed in the video in order to compare with the real uh, vehicle and this is another way of actually optimizing um, the end recognition engine. And um, the good thing is that once you've done those manual settings you can reinsert those settings into the system and do a further analysis of uh, the snapshots and actually prove that your configuration changes have been to the better and uh, you can see here we now analyze the five snapshots and we have an average confidence level of 91 percent and in average we, we spend um, 200 milliseconds as processing time on each of those recognitions so this is a very good way of actually proving that this, the, uh, the configuration settings are made the changes are made are good enough for production There is also another uh, level of advanced settings that you can do and um, that is <coughs> coming up here. So there is a, even a further level of um, uh, sort of fine tuning and uh, those of you who have been working with, uh, with video analytical applications will know that um, it's not that difficult to get a high 
uh, recognition rate or confidence level. Um, the, the trick is to balance that with a uh, sort of in, a reasonable uh, processing power in order to uh, not spend too much uh, money on hardware and servers. And what you can do with those sliders that you have here, you can actually balance the performance uh, in terms of usage of hardware versus uh, accuracy and recognition uh, rates. And there are a number of parameters that you can uh, tweak uh, this between. And uh, for example, uh, one thing is that you can um, control the number of frames um, that you analyze per second. And obviously, the higher speed vehicles have in your um, application, the more frames it's um, you should uh, analyze in order to get a good detection. Um, you can also um, threshold uh, the time that you spend on analyzing each uh, license plate, so you can actually have a sort of a threshold uh, being set. Um, you can also uh, control the number of plates that you analyze within one frame. Um, normally, if you run multi-lane detection, you would have more than one uh, license plate, but otherwise you can actually optimize the recognition engine by adjusting that. And also, um, <coughs> There is no reason why you should be seeking 99% confidence level because it's probably good enough it's, if it's 85-90% uh, and by thresholding uh, the confidence level you can cease further analysis and actually save on the processing power. And also another one is that if you, if you have uh, license plates being detected uh, where you actually don't have a good uh, confidence level. It could be that the, the license plate is uh, dirty, it could be a broken license plate. You should not burden um, burden the engine uh, by trying to analyze and actually derive a detection on that license plate. So that is another way of how you can fine-tune uh, your engine. And again, uh, when you adjusted those settings, you again can re-initiate an uh, analysis of the snapshots that you have been using. So it's always a feedback uh, possibility on the changes you do. Um, so that was the configura configuration wizard. Um, another thing that we spent quite some effort on uh, this time is to rewrite and sort of enhance and beef up uh, the documentation and the online help. And for that we introduced uh, much more visual, visualized, uh, visual and graphical um, representation of things that you should consider deploying uh, license plate recognition, uh, camera placement, environmental conditions that you should factor into uh, the application and the, and, and the solution. And uh, another good thing is that we now also localized uh, those instructions into the languages that you see here. Uh, the languages in Intellic are also having having the manuals um, localized. The other ones are only having the user interface lo uh, localized. And all this is done to reduce the cost for you, reduce the time that you spend with the customer, and hopefully also benefiting the customer to have a more accurate and more smoothly running uh, system uh, as the end result. So hopefully you, you appreciate those changes because we think this is in fact great and we have had very good response from um, partners having used this in sort of pilot type of installations. Um, another thing that um, is new in the 2015 um, version is the reporting capability that I just showed you. Um, so we don't spend too much time on this. So um, just so you know that if you're looking, if you're looking at the previous version, you cannot find the reporting capability. Then I said that we also beefed up um, how we work with match list, and here we introduced uh, custom fields. Um, so we now can actually add and append um, <coughs> custom data to um, the license plates. And for example, if you're running a, a company and you want to um, empower the operator to uh, verify that the driver is the right driver, we can add employee name, employee number, maybe the parking area that in where uh, the vehicle should be parking. And this would be the employee um, list. Then we can define another list, which could be a guest list or a visitor list. And here we could uh, define 
uh, visitors that we expect during the day and we can grant and greet those um, visitors by name and be be sort of more um, proactive in the in the sort of welcoming if you are running a transportation company if you are expecting deliveries you can have the driver's name you can have the driver order and some other sort of more business related uh, information tied to the vehicle which can be validated upon uh, delivery so you, you have a verification there and all these not only empowers the operator to take the right decisions real time, but it also empowers and sort of enriches uh, the reporting and the sort of documentation on the sort of back end of this, where we actually export information and we can immediately see that this is uh, Unit O and that passed through the gate uh, Saturday evening. So th this is um, uh, another neat sort of um, add-on to uh, the 2015 um, release. And then something that is very tangible and hopefully something that you will be able to leverage on is that we have changed the bundling uh, of the product uh, because <clears throat> Uh, the product is built up by three licenses, a uh, base license, uh, a camera license, and a country module license. And previously, in previous versions, we have had uh, one country module included in the base license in order to get uh, customers started with the application. We have had feedback uh, from both end customers, but also certainly um, partners of ours that uh, it very often um, is too little to just have one country module if you are working in a in a region uh, Europe, uh, US, you will always have surrounding um, countries where you can expect uh, visitor vehicles from and normally you would need uh, more country modules active in the system so therefore we introduced five country modules uh, as a part of the base license and we do that by maintaining um, the, the list price and the recommended price uh, for uh, the base license so you actually get a far better deal uh, with the 2015 uh, version and hopefully as I said uh, that will make you more competitive in the market and actually lower the barrier for end customers to engage with the solution to actually see what it can do for them because there are a lot of benefits derived uh, from the application. So in a nutshell as a summary uh, those are the four focus areas for the 2015 release. We talked about both the features and the sort of uh, advantages and the benefits of this and so this is something that you can read yourself at the later stage. Uh, speaking about licensing, um, I just wanted to um, sort of rebrief you on the licensing structure and especially for those who have not been working with the product previously. So um, this, the way we license the XProtect LPR uh, application is that we have the base license that now contains the five country modules. It clocks in on um, 195 euro or 300 US dollar. So that is the base license. Uh, in addition to that, you um, need a camera license for each camera that you want to apply license plate recognition on, and you see the prices, the re uh, recommended market prices here. And that camera license is in addition to the actual VMS license, the VMS device license. So you would need both a VMS device license and an LPR camera license. And in installations where you need more counter modules uh, than the five that are included in the base license. You can purchase, or the end customer can purchase, additional counter modules uh, per their need, uh, according to the prices that you see here. Um, there is another practical piece of information uh, to this, and that is that. Um, should you have customers who are today using the XProtect LPR 1.0 version, um, the previous version of LPR, um, they can uh, upgrade um, by just downloading uh, the LPR 2015 software package and actually install it and reuse the same SLC. Uh, they will not get access to the four additional uh, country modules, but they will get access to um, the new uh, functionality. Um, there, there is a 
in the in the in the opening, I said that um, LPR XProtect LPR is compatible with most of our uh, both VMS and uh, NVR products, and it's uh, true. And in fact, it's only um, not uh, applicable with the XProtect the central product and the Myosin Husky M10 unit. But otherwise, uh, XProtect LPR can run on any of the other products. If you want to embark on uh, or install this with a customer, um, in order to benefit, benefit from all the new uh, functionality, uh, you would need uh, the latest service releases of uh, our products. And for the corporate and Exprotect expert products, it's the service release 70D. And for Exprotect Enterprise, Exprotect Professional, and Exprotect Express, it's uh, service release release 8.6D. So um, the product is compatible with previous version. It will function, it will work, but it will not unlock the latest functionality. In order to do so, you will need the latest service releases. And for the time being, the latest uh, functions are not available for the Husky units, although uh, the product is compatible with uh, the Husky units. <laughs> 